gravity assists. Kind of an odd video to uh, to actually call this, and uh, slightly different format when compared to usual, but uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about actual gravity assists in KSP today, and how they can actually be useful in the right sort of circumstances. The reason this sort of thing comes about is because, um, well, the other day I was simply playing around with the ion engines. Um, in case you're not aware, the ion engines aren't exactly the most powerful, um, most powerful engines in the game, but they are extremely efficient. They don't run off liquid fuel and oxidizer like most engines, they instead run off of xenon gas and electric charge. So providing you have a radio, a radio thermal isoelectric generator, whatever they're called, the RTGs, along with, um, along with a, yeah, a sufficient supply of xenon gas, you can get quite far. As I uh, found out, I managed to get to Joule on one of my vi on my one of my uh, one of my first missions with the Ion Probe, which is in the same save as I'm doing this mission in today. This mission doesn't get quite as far, although we do manage to get a couple of nice gravity assists. That would be my main um, my main suggestion with using Ion engines is if you can use gravity assists as much as possible. If you need to save at like I don't know a few hundred meters a second of delta v, use the moon as a using use that as a gravity assist to escape Kerbin's gravity like I will do in this video here. I'm basically in this video just trying to get as far out as possible by using the least amount of fuel or xenon gas. The launch didn't go particularly uh, smoothly shall we say. You can see we kind of uh, we turned over a little bit early, but we, we managed to get into space just fine and I'm um, just plotting a course for the moon here And the closer I am in the gravity well, obviously the more acceleration I'll pick up and so uh, that the more fuel that will inevitably save me And I do do a, li a few course corrections on the actual way here uh, But slightly off topic for a second and something that I'm kind of quite pleased about to be honest This is the first video that I'm doing in 60 frames per second. Yes, that's right You're gonna be viewing this video in glorious 60 FPS 60 FPS for the first time. Not sure if I'm going to be able to do every single video like this in 60 FPS in the future, just purely because if I'm doing actual real time footage, uh, chances are the game isn't actually going to run at 60 FPS, not at this stage anyway. Um, chances are it'll be running at 30 FPS and so I'll just render it as a normal MPEG-2 format, but render it as MPEG-4 this time around shouldn't be too hard and uh, as soon as it's sped up to four times normal speed the uh, frame rate is uh, really doesn't matter because it's running at 60 fps pretty much solidly anyway at uh, at at uh, four times normal speed. You can see here we're on our way to the moon now, waving Kerbin goodbye. Of course, we still got the upper stage of that rocket attached because, hey, it's extra delta V. We might as well use it while we actually can. And we're actually going to use that in order to accelerate up and plot a, uh, a course to Juno, I think. And you can see the uh, the time warp bug uh, getting in my way once again there. Time warp too fast over a boundary and it messed up the physics something awful. And just look at that close approach to the moon there. It's beautiful. You saw that in the intro clip and it's... Uh, very, very nice indeed. So the probe you can see here, I called it Sunsat 2 because the first one was called Sunsat 1. Uh, the only reason it's actually called that is because it's got solar panels all over the place. Uh, inside that solar panel sort of casing is a uh, zen basically loads of xenon gas tanks. And uh, I see if I can get out to Jewel here, you can see the probe on Jewel already. Um, but I just couldn't do it this time. However, with a bit of tweaking and a couple of orbits, I did actually manage to get an intercept with Juna, and I managed to get an orbital intersect with that. And so, yeah, I would definitely recommend using uh, gravity assists and different stuff like that uh, with ion engines, because like I say, the acceleration isn't exactly uh, brilliant, but uh, the specific impulse of these things is crazy. And providing you're patient, and providing you can actually... Um, Providing you can actually wait the uh, the burn times that they're sufficient. It's amazing what you can actually achieve with these things I could I can without a doubt uh, Say that you could probably get to eat get to uh, get to Elu um, providing you've launched into a, a uh, escape trajectory out of Kerbin and used a gravity assist from the moon, I have no doubt that uh, providing you had the patience, you could get to Elu with enough delta V within one or two uh, xenon gas tanks providing you played it safe and maybe got a gravity assist here and there. And you can see here we get our Juna encounter, which I later trim in order to get the thing actually closer to, uh, to Juna. Now, I wanted to use this video as well to talk a little bit about something new. And uh, this is a this is that teaser series that I was talking about, uh, which is coming up in the next couple of weeks or so. Basically, this is going to be called the Hangar. Now, basically, what the Hangar is going to be is 
a public hanger on kerbalx.com. In case you're not aware, this is a, a community craft sharing uh, website. You can upload your craft files. I will do a tutorial video on how to do it in case you're not already aware how to. I'm basically going to be starting a public hanger on there. So if you guys want to submit your craft into this public hanger, I will choose one once per episode. Not quite sure how, how often these episodes are going to come out because of college and work and what have you, but they're going to come out on a semi-regular basis. Probably a bit more often than operation exploration but what can you do and uh, I'll pick one at random and I will review it it can be a plane spacecraft um, pre preferably a plane or SSTO or a rover or something like that something that I can review preferably on Kerbin or in low Kerbin orbit something like that um, if you could if you send those in that would be great and uh, like I say I'll pick one random one to review in the neck in the uh, in the episode for it so I'll leave a link to the hangar in the description of this video down below it may be open by the time I've got this uh, this video up. It might not. It depends on uh, my organization skills because they've been terrible recently. But um, I really hope that this series can take off because I've been meaning to have a series for a while now that sort of gives back to you guys. Um, because I never really feel that I actually do enough for my community. I always feel like you guys are just sort of there consuming the content and I want to actually do something that sort of like one-to-one -one engages you guys. I know that sort of Operation Exploration sort of does that to an extent, but I haven't really reached an ep episode yet where that sort of concept can come to a fruition. So I thought that I'd maybe uh, do this series for now to uh, to hopefully uh, whet your appetite and uh, hopefully it'll, it'll be quite a cool... Uh, cool little thing to do I think and um, yeah that's basically um, all I really wanted to say about that so I really hope that you guys will enjoy it I'll be playing sort of like a pseudo character of a semi evil corporation if you know what I mean it's sort of like a a court a, a basically an EA if you know what I'm talking about it's a um, it's a corporation that pretends to be all nicey nicey and uh, the customers first and what have you but uh, turns out that underneath we are actually uh, we're an evil we're an evil corporation with deeds that uh, all you know all you know is that they're evil and uh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna uh, reveal anymore I'm gonna leave that to the conspiracy theorists among you uh, to to uh, to theorize on but here you can see we are actually arriving at Juno and I'm taking some screenshots uh, some lovely screenshots and I'm trying to see if I can actually get any higher but unfortunately we've, uh, we've approached Juno at just the wrong angle in order to uh, kick up any uh, sufficient velocity to actually kick our apps above the sun much higher in fact we actually get kicked lower as a result of this and um, so I decided to just use the time to actually um, take some nice screenshots of the sunrise of uh, glinting through Juna's thin atmosphere here. I also wanted to um, leave this mission, this uh, ion engine mission, open for you guys to actually uh, actually help with. So I'm going to leave, obviously you'll see the orbital information on this screen here and I'll put it back up on the screen in a second when I actually go to fade this video out. But um, let me know guys if you have any ways of getting any further out into the Kerbal system, maybe visiting Jewel, Elu or Dres, let me know in the comment section down below. But yeah, that's pretty much going to round it off for this, uh, this uh, episode guys. Remember to leave a like if you're, and subscribe of course if you're new here. This is Brad signing off and as always, stay classy. What a beautiful, beautiful shot. <laughs>